All right. So number four, we are looking at our homework. We want to find the limit as x approaches negative 2 of this function. And I want my table to start at negative 2. All right, so let's look at my calculator. There's an error occurring at negative 2. That means there's either a hole or an asymptote there. All right, what would be a value that is approaching? If I was between 0 0.9 and 1.1, .1, what could you say? 1. 1, I would put 1. Now, what do you think is occurring here? If you factored that down, could you factor and get an x plus 2 out of this? A hole. A hole would be occurring there. That's the type of discontinuity. There's a hole. Now, if you graph it on a graph calculator, could you see a hole? No. But can you see an asymptote? Yes. All right, let's look at number 6. All righty now. So I'm going to put y equals, clear it. 1 minus x minus 2 divided by, I put the whole numerator in parentheses and then the denominator in parentheses. I'm going to go to my table set. I'm going to start negative 3. All right, so let's look. When I did that, guys, do you see... Okay, first of all, do you think a hole or an asset is occurring here? Look at the... Guys, I said a special prayer last night that we would be more accurate today in class. I can sit down and I can make you Google Khan Academy and I can make you teach yourself. But you're going to interact with me. So looking at number six, original problem, do you think you can factor that and break it down? No. No. So what is present in this graph? Asymptote. And let me tell you another reason why you know it's an asymptote. There's an error here, but do you see how it shoots straight up and it shoots straight down? That means this asymptote is going one way or another way, okay? So when you have this case, guys, when it's so different like that, what you need to do is look at the graph, okay? So let's hit the graph button. And we are what concerned at negative three. This is a great, this is leading into a good discussion about it. So let's determine the limit as x approaches negative three from the left. If I'm coming from the left, where's this limit going to? Shoot straight down. Negative. This is a case you would use negative infinity. The limit would be negative infinity. Hold on now, that's not your answer. Hold on. Negative infinity. This is shooting straight up. If from the right it's going to positive infinity. I got one going to negative and one going to positive. So what do you think the overall limit is? Zero. It does not exist because it's going two different directions. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not going to have one like this on a table feature. I shouldn't have put that here because we ain't talked about it, but we're going to go into that lesson today. You see how that, if, it's go, if they're both going to positive infinity, your overall limit will be positive infinity. Do you see that? In this case, this is a does not exist. Okay, so let's look at the second one. I got a feeling the next one's going to be like that as well. As x goes to 2, so let's look at what's going on in the behavior at 2. One's going negative infinity, and one's, so one's going positive, and one's going negative. So the limit is what? Does not exist. Do you see that? Because there's an asymptote occurring there. Are there any questions on that? All right. Let's look at our homework here. Did you have any trouble with the back page? Alright, so here's your homework, 13 through 18, omit 16. So on number 13, the first thing when you're trying to find limits algebraically, you always try what first, guys? Plug it in. Direct substitution. You're going to plug it in, plug it in. Remember the Glad commercial? Plug it in, plug it in. I'm Alright, that's on. Um, plug it in, plug it in. Okay, so. I'm going to take negative 3. If I plug negative 3, do I run into a situation with zeros in a denominator? No. 
So 3 times negative 3 is negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7. Number 14. I almost messed up on this. I thought that was I thought that would give me 0, but that's negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1 gives me negative 2, so is that okay? Negative 1 cubed is negative 1 minus 1, so negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. So direct substitution works there as well. Number 15, if I plug negative 1 in, I get 0 here. That doesn't work, so I need to try either factoring, finding a common denominator, or rationalizing. Well, the common denominator is not going to work here, or rationalize because I have no writable. So I'm going to try factoring. So I come over here and factor. I can cross out the x plus 1 and then go back and try direct substitution. And that does give me negative 5. All right. Number 17, direct substitution. As x approaches pi, you can have radians down here. You can have trig. I plug pi in. It's tan pi okay. Does that give me something that doesn't have a 0 in the denominator? Yes. Tan pi is 0. So 0 is your answer. Does that make sense? Okay, because the order pair for pi is negative 1, 0, 0 divided by negative 1. And then number 18, the limit as x approaches 7 of secant pi over x6. I take 7, I plug it in for pi, secant of 7 pi over 6, where the cosine is square root negative square root of 3 over 2. I flip it, rationalize my denominator, and I get negative 2 square root of 3 over 3. Are y'all good on those? Okay. I want to go back to something because after y'all left yesterday, I thought about something and I need to re explain number 8 on page 3. Let's look at number 8 on page 3. And I wonder if any of y'all caught this. Alright. When you have guys. Like we did A correct. A is correct. We need to look back at B and C. Do you see these numbers where the function jumps from one to the other? Do you think we might need to both check the right side and the left side to make sure they check approaching the same value? Because what we did, we didn't yesterday. We just evaluated. We took 2 and plugged it into this one because it was equal to. Yes, that will give you what f of 2 is equal to, but a limit is what the value is approaching. So we need to see what this side is approaching and this because that is like a major turning point in the graph. Does that make sense? So let's watch this. If I take 2 and plug that into it, 2 squared is 4. That's negative 4 plus 8 is what? 4. So from the left, it's approaching 4. 2 times 2 is? It's approaching 4 from the right. So what's your overall limit? 4. So we got that one correct. Do you see that? Here, we're talking about 4, okay? I take 4, I plug 4 in. 2 times 4 is? So from the left, it's approaching what? 8. From the right, I take 4 minus 4 is? Square root of 0 is? 0 plus 6 is? Are they approaching the same value? So that would be does not exist instead of 8. Does that make sense? On those, we, now if it's not, like 1 was not one of those major turning points. You just plug it into whatever it was. But these two are where something's happening in the graph. You've got to check both directions. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's just review. When we had problems like this yesterday, like number 9, you have to rationalize the what? Numerator. Number 10, you had to find a what? Number 11, you had to do what? Very good. Okay, now you're going to have 10, 12 minutes to do some problems in class, and we're going over it. I want you to complete numbers 19 through 27 right now on page 10. Do 19 through 27 on page 10, and then we're going to go over that, okay? You might not have enough room, and I'm going over that in the next 9 to 10 minutes. So start working. Yes, quickly, though. Quickly. This is a very important part of what we're doing today. If you need notebook paper, some up there, but do not just sit there and stare at the page. While post attendance.
I've got to say this because there's people at home watching the video. Video. I'm just going to say. I'm just going to repeat the assignment. You're already doing assignment, so don't think anything about it. Okay. You should be doing page ten, numbers nineteen through twenty-seven at this time. I'm going to go over that in just a second. That Roger on my tent roster next year. <laughs> Can you imagine you off us the year and come back after Christmas and take one semester pre cal tree? That give you a year to learn your tree values. But you know I have 90 signed up for doing a next year. Yeah, I probably wouldn't take all what I have to be able to I'm not teaching pre AP, I'm just teaching doing a roll. You get to know Miss Harper down the hallway. I would I would tell her good things about you because she'd be impressed if we get there. But you're gonna pull it off. You always do. But you, you better make two hundreds on the next limits and derivatives test. Okay. Just yes. Oh, don't worry about that on um, negative after four. Just pretend, just say it's X approaching four. I shouldn't have put it negative there. Thank you. We're going to talk about those tomorrow. You can work in your group if you have trouble with one. I can, you can come up here and I can help you. I'll try direct substitution. If I don't get zero, then I can use what I have here. So I pull up three, and three plus one is four. It's two. Two times three is six. Two times three is six. Plus six. Still gives me zero, don't it? So what I need to do is group some stuff together and factor out the bottom. So, because these both have x plus one, I'm going to put those together. Should I do that? Plus two x minus six. So what can I take out of those? Mm -hmm. Square root of x plus one. And I can take a whatever there. Two. And that's what's good because I can answer that out here. Oh, yeah. that? Now I'll just try to rest. I should go three and three plus one is. Square root of four is. 
going over a few of these. Alright, number 19. that give y'all any trouble? Okay, y'all, well, let me work this one. Here we go. Number 19, we have the limit as x approaches 3 of the square root of x plus 1 minus 2 over x minus 3. First thing I do is I try direct substitution. Well, when I directly substitute 3 in for this, I get 0 in the denominator. So i got to take another route. This square root, this radical stands out to me, so I'm going to go the route of rationalizing. So I'm going to rationalize the numerator. Square root of x plus 1, I change that minus to what? Plus 2. 
Now let's take our time and multiply. Here we go. This square root times this square root cancels that square root out and you're just left with x plus 1. This times 2 would give me positive 2 square root of x plus 1. This times this would give me negative 2 times square root of x plus 1. And then negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4. And you can see these will cancel out. Now I'm going to say x times this is x square root of x plus 1. x times 2 is 2x. Negative 3 times this is negative 3 square root of x plus 1. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. All right, let's clean it up. 1 and negative 4 is negative 3. I can't combine anything on bottom. So what I'm going to do here, guys, I'm going to take a breather, and I'm going to say, okay, I'm concerned with what the denominator is in. I'm going to apply, I'm going to plug 3 into all that on bottom. If I still get 0 in the denominator, I do something else, okay? So let me see what I'm working with here. If I plug 3 here, 3 plus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2 times 3 is 6. Plug 3 and I got 2 times 3 is 6. So I got 12 on that side, don't I? 3 plus 1 is? Square root of 4 is? 2 times negative 3 is? Negative 6. I got negative 6 and negative 6, which is what? So that comes out to what again? Zero. Zero. So I said, okay. I can't rationalize. I can't find. I'm going to try to factor here. What I see happening is I'm going to put these two together because they both have an x plus 1 in common, okay? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that out. So now I'm going to rearrange on bottom. Now I'm going to do some factoring. When I take a x plus, the square root of x plus 1 out, that leaves me x minus 3 here. And I like that because I'm going to eventually cancel that out. I'm going to take a positive 2 out that leaves a x minus 3. That leaves me x minus 3 over x minus 3 and square root of x plus 1 plus 2. These cancel out. I'm left with 1 over the square root of x plus 1 plus 2. Okay, I'm going to check my denominator again. I take 3, plug it in. 3 plus 1 is? 4. Square root of 4 is? 2 plus 2 is? Did I get 0? So am I good? So my answer is 1 fourth. That is the, the value that that function is approaching as x goes to 3 is 1 fourth. Does that make sense now? Yes. Oh, yes, your final's pretty. Your final covers everything we come learn this semester. Yes. And the last five are short answer and not multiple choice because I have to send those five to Jeff State to prove that you learned it. Don't worry, I'm going to have a special part on your study guide. I said, be sure to look at these five types of problems before you come to that final. Oh, and your, final, and your study guide, guys, is not only practice problems. It's going to be saying, turn and look at page so-and-so in your notebook. Study this page. So you don't have to go back and pull problems. That's how my college professor did in math 113. That's how I'm going to do it this time. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it that Thursday. We're probably, we're probably going to start on Thursday and finish it Friday. I'm just uh, you probably be taking your last test in here on that Wednesday. But, yeah, we can come up with something. You have to do your studying for this outside of class because we're going to be having our last test probably a day or two before the final. Mm -hmm. Huh? No, your grades are due May 4th. I mean, May, the Monday after May 4th. So I got a grade in that weekend. Mm -hmm. You've got three weeks. Three weeks left in here. All right. Number 20. The limit as x approaches 1 of sine pi over x 2. I'm going to try direct substitute. I plug 1 in there. Am I going to get 0 on the denominator? No. no. So I got 1 times pi is pi. What's sine of pi over 2? 1. That's your answer. I take 1. I plug it in. Sine of pi over 2 equals 1. That is your limit. All right, let's look at 21. The limit as x goes to 0 of x squared minus 3x over x. 
If I try direct please pay attention to me. If I try direct substitution, what will I have occur over here? Zero. Zero. So do I want to do that? No. What technique can we use here? Right. I'm going to factor out a what on top. X. And when I do that, these x's cancel out. Now plug zero in. Zero minus three equals what? Negative three. Very good. Number 22. The limit is theta goes to pi of theta secant theta. If I take pi and plug it in for these thetas, I get pi times secant of pi. Okay, what secant's related to cosine of pi? Cosine of pi is what? Negative 1. Secant would be just flip it, still negative 1, isn't it? So pi times negative 1 is what? That's your answer. All right, number 23, I told you not to worry about that little uh, sign right there. We're going to learn how to do those tomorrow algebraically. All right, do I need to work number 23? It's very similar to number 19. Is it one more? Let me see. Can I use yours? Let's see. Okay. Number 23, we need to rationalize our denominator. I'm checking Grayton's work. That's correct. That's correct. Okay, those cancel out on top, the same thing. Then he factored, he grouped his square root of x together, took that out, canceled, and you got one fourth. Very good. You see that, TJ? Very good. Number 24, if you plug 3 in the denominator, you're going to get 0, so we had to do some grouping here. Grouping. We took an x squared out, then we took a 2 out. Oh, that's right. Okay. I thought that was a minus. That's a plus. That's a plus there. Took a 2 out, grouped it, canceled out, then plugged 3 in. I don't get 0 there. It's 11 over 37. That's correct. All right, let me work number 25. All right, number 25. I have the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over 3 plus x minus 1 over 3 all over x. If I take my limit to direct substitution, I get 0 in the denominator, so I can't do that. I see some subtracting fractions. So, TJ, what technique is calling out to me? Uh, find, a Find a common denominator. So I'm going to come over here. Your common denominator would be 3 and 3 plus x. So you have to settle for both of them. So if I multiply this, it's going to be, I'm going to multiply this by 3 plus x because I multiply the de denominator. I'm going to multiply that by the, I multiply this by 3, so I'm going to multiply the numerator. So i got 3. That's a negative, isn't it? You see that? That's going to be negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 1 times x is negative x. I distributed this negative 1 right there all over 3 times 3 plus x. Well, they just cancel out, leaving negative x over 3 times 3 plus x. So that is what I'm going to put in place of this. So the limit as x goes to 0 of negative x over 3 times 3 plus x all over x. Well, that's a complex fraction, so I'm going to come under here and write what that really means. That means that first term divided by x. Well, leave the first one alone, change a division to multiplication, and flip. At this point, I can cross simplify. I can take this out. That leaves a negative 1. Don't forget that negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 over 3 times 3 plus x. Well, now I'm going to try direct substitution. I plug 0 in. I don't get 0 in the denominator anymore. I get negative 1 times 9. Th oh, negative 1 over 9 because 3 times 3 is 9. Number 26, the limit is x goes to negative 3. x plus 3 over x squared plus 5x plus 6. 
If you plug negative 3 in for here, you get 0. So I'm going to try factoring. Factor the denominator. I get x plus 3 and x plus 2. Cancel those out. I'm left with 1 over x plus 2. I'm going to substitute a negative 3 and try direct substitution again. That gives me 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. It's not bad, is it? And number 27. The limit as x goes to 4 of 2x plus 1. I'm so glad we reviewed this in math workshop. This exponent shouldn't give you any trouble now. I tell you 4, I plug it in. What's 2 times 4? Plus 1 is 9. Which one's my root? My numerator or denominator? denominator. What's the square root of 9? 3 cubed is... Very good. Alright, are y'all good on that learning chart? Finding limits algebraic. I need a hand signal. Does it make more sense today? Alright, now I'm not finished. I'm just going to go and tell you what your assignment is and I'm going to keep teaching. The bell rings, y'all are dismissed. But this assignment is now page 905, 17 through 20. That's I'm taking this up for correctness for eight months. This is finding limits from a graph, okay? We've practiced that many days now. You should be fine on that. Page 913, I'm not going to take this up. I'm going to just come around and check it. That is what we just did. That's more practice. This is like practice. They are odd, so you can check it in the back of the book, okay? This price is what we learned Monday. This is price what we learned the last two days, okay? This will be turned in on two separate sheets of paper. This will be turned in for a correctness grade. This will be checked for a completion grade. This is going to make sure you understand. Now, turn to the next page, page 5. We're going to keep going on our notes. So, guys, we've, now we're going to take a look at specifically just one-sided limits. And when I say one-sided, I'm just talking about those that have either from the right or left. From the right or left. We've already talked about these some. And we're on page 5. We're just focusing on one side of the limits where it just wants you to look at one side, the left and the right. And we're going to look at the graph today, and then tomorrow we're going to look at how we do it algebraically when it just wants to know one certain side. Because those that we're doing algebraic right now is the overall limit, isn't it? Okay. Your graph is not too good in your notes, and I apologize. That's why I drew it better up here so you can see it. Okay. But let's look here. I want the limit as x approaches negative 6 from the what side? From the left. I just want to know from the left. Okay, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Is right, negative 6. From the left, it's approaching what value? Negative 1. Do you see that? There's negative 6. If I'm coming from the left, negative is that negative 1, isn't it? Does everybody agree? What is it coming from the right? One, two, three, what's up there? Four. That would be four. Does that make sense? Haven't we done this already? Now, what would you put down for f of negative six? Would you put the negative one or four? Is that open or closed? Closed. And that is? So what would you put? Negative one. Does that make sense? Number four. The limit as x approaches negative one from the left. Negative one's right here. If I'm coming from the left, what value is it going to? What value, y value is it going to? Two. two. If I come from the right, it's still going to what? Two. Do y'all see that? What would you put down for f of negative one? Would you put two or would you put three there? Three. I am not done yet. Don't be rude. Number seven. The limit as x goes to 3 from the left. 3 is right here. What do you see going right up down this graph right here? Asymptote. So if I'm coming from the left at 3, it's going to what infinity? Negative. If I'm coming from the right, it's going to positive. Do I have an f of 3 value? 
So what will I put? Does not exist. Do you see that? We'll continue that now tomorrow. Thank you. I will check Mr. Nello. Okay? I will check Mr. Nello. Thank you. Yes. When you're having a bad day, you gotta make yourself make it better. Yes, have you had a bad day? Oh, yeah. What this happened? morning, okay, so get home from baseball around like 10 20. Sorry, sorry, to type my paper for doing all the English. You lost your paper. No, 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 no. What's about like one o'clock? I'm putting a check point on your desk. I want you to do that first, please. I set three alarms. None of them went off. And you missed them, right? No, uh, no. Well, I, I was late. I think you could. I was late. Long story short, turn them on. Long story, yeah. Now you're not late until you get this checkpoint done. Do this for free. Hey, Josh, can you give him a checkpoint? I think he can do it. It won't take you two minutes. Okay, what happened? Anyways, anyways, turn them for your papers here. This ball at my seat. So you didn't miss that? No. Yes. I came to check the last night to see you work at 4.30. You were done. Yeah, I said Friday. I don't want to do Friday. I need you to be doing this check more right now. Okay, what you doing?
checkpoint right now. Do not leave your desk. Once you're done with checkpoint, you need to be doing your math workshop one through seven. I got to give some stuff out to people. Do not talk at the moment. Thank you. Oh my goodness, we're on 43 minutes.